Building a PC can be a gratifying experience, assuming you don't fuck it up. What is going on guys? I am AJ and today we are going to be covering 7 PC building mistakes that you should do your best to avoid. So stick around and let's discuss this. So let's start at the very beginning. No no, not that far back. But just before you buy your parts. Here we have number one, not making sure all your parts are compatible beforehand. There's nothing more frustrating than having to delay completing a build due to issues like your RAM being too tall for your air cooler, or not checking to see if your case can fit your GPU. The best way to mitigate this issue is to utilize tools like PC Part Picker or Newegg's PC Builder. Coming in at number 2 is not connecting things properly. This can not only cause certain components to not be detected by your system, but your system may not even boot up at all. And while it's pretty hard to connect things like PSU cables incorrectly due to the pin clip orientation fitting only one way, I'm sure it's happened. I'm totally not speaking from experience here. <laughs> number 3 using excessive force. Putting manufacturing defects aside, components are engineered with near perfect accuracy. As long as you're putting the right thing into the right place, the right amount of pressure goes a long way. And that goes double for anything that screws in, like motherboards. Too much pressure can actually crack the board, which obviously isn't good. Number four. Throwing out the box is your parts coming. Now, while I understand most people would want to keep the clutter down to a minimum, there's always a slight chance that a part you buy will be dead on arrival. Most retailers won't accept a return for any part that wasn't shipped back in the original packaging. Why? Well, every component is shipped in a material designed specifically for that component in order to maximize its integrity once it leaves the factory. Shipping it in any packaging other than what it came with may increase the chances of being damaged further, resulting in more time and effort needed in order to address the original issue. So most company policies require original packaging to be used upon return. Number 5. Using the wrong power supply cables. Now this is one of the more important ones on this list, and for good reason. While the connectors may appear to be universal, the individual pin layouts and respective voltages are definitely not, even amongst the same brand. Using cables that didn't come with your PSU will result in catastrophic electrical shorts that will either burn out most if not all of your other components, or start a fire outright. I cannot stress this enough. Only use the cables that are included with the power supply, or an exact replacement from the manufacturer. Number 6. Leaving performance on the table, especially when it comes to stuff like RAM. Despite being advertised for a certain speed, RAM will typically run at a lower default setting. 2133 MHz for DDR4 and 4800 for DDR5 specifically. You will have to go into the BIOS and enable either XMP or DLCP for your Intel and AMD boards respectively. This concept even extends to monitors as they too run at lower default settings. Spending the extra cash on a monitor with a high refresh rate seems like kind of a waste if you don't manually set it to advertise speeds. Speaking of spending extra cash, we have our seventh and final mistake, overspending on a build. Now obviously I can't tell you how to spend your own money, especially if you have the capital, but for those of you who are on a budget, you don't have to break the bank to get decent performance. Remember, the key here is to understand the difference between what you actually need and what you simply want. If, for example, you're building a 1080p gaming rig and your budget is set around 800 bucks, buying a $300 case because it looks cooler is probably not the best allocation of resources, as you'll either end up going way over budget or cutting corners where they matter most, cutting down the overall performance of your rig. Let me know about some of your PC building mistakes and I'll see you guys in the comments.